Radio, Raheem with Teddy Atlas, our last night in Riyadh, but boy, was there a hell of a show on last night. 5v5, shout out for Queensberry. And in the main The more event- experienced promoter won. What's happening? The more experienced promoter won. <laughs> yeah. No, no, both, both of them are tremendous, obviously. Uh, they're the top guys in the business. They do a great job, both of them. But the more experienced guy, it went. But you do have to have the horses in the stable. Um, and he had the better, you know, so to speak, uh, at the end of the day, horse in the stable, although there were some close ones. And he didn't have this uh, a run of favorites either. His fighters weren't the uh, They were the dogs. They were the underdogs for the most part. Uh, for the for the most part, not all of them, but you're right. Yeah. That's true. He, he did. Well, it was, you know, it was the night of uh, the underdog, I guess. Uh, but really, what... You have to put it in really proper perspective. You have to look up the entirety of what's been happening in this sport over the last year or whatever real accurate amount of time it's been. But since Turkey Alice came around, uh, he's really infused the sport with a shot of adrenaline uh, that, that has made the sport more, more relative. Uh, and, and this sport should always be relative. You know, uh, you archaeologists go back and look in caves, and they're going to see dwellings of fighters on, on in the on the walls. They're going to see pictures of fighters throwing punches over two thousand years ago. Uh, this sport should still be relative, and it was getting less relative for one reason, because the fans weren't getting what they wanted, and the f- sport wasn't getting what it needed. The top guys fighting each other, right. and um. And, and also what made last night really amazing, the five on five, five, is if you go back two weeks ago, I think we were here for a fight that put all the titles together. That was an incredible show. It, it would have been enough to rest your laurels for a year, you know, to say, hey, we gave you that. Let's sit back now. Let's go down the seashore, put our feet in the sand. You know, let's relax a little bit because you can't complain. We unified the title. It was an epic fight. And no, no resting. Two weeks later, come back and do five on five. That is what really, to me, that's the way I look at it in the entirety of it. Not just that last night was incredible. That was incredible that it's bouncing off of what happened two weeks ago. That's incredible. And that puts boxing at the forefront and not just relevant, but at the top of everybody's priority list as to what needs to be watched in combat sports because you know the ufc was on last night as well and you know credit to them for having take nothing away from ufc they've done a tremendous job of building that brand but they haven't been around as long as boxing boxing has been around Mm -hmm. forever and and it it should it should have its rightful top spot yeah, and we were losing the young audience to MMA and UFC, and because of His Excellency's, uh, really, like you say, just shot of adrenaline into boxing and being able to see what we always knew boxing could be actually coming to fruition is uh, is a game changer. And now we're on the cuffs constantly of new and bigger fights, one of which is going to be Dubois, Joshua, at Wembley Stadium for the IBF title. What you've seen from... Uh, Daniel Dubois last night and what we saw from Joshua last time out here in Saudi. What do you think of that matchup? What I saw of Dubois last night is a continuation (laughs) of a man finding himself, what I saw against Miller. Look, let's be straight here. Dubois always had ability. He was strong. He knew how to fight. He had good people around him. When he came up short in two fights against Joyce and then Against Zuzik. Uzik was a little controversy. But at the end of the day, he came up short because he, from the mental side of it, wasn't able to get over the hump. It wasn't physical. It was just that mentally he hadn't found himself yet. He, he, he hadn't put together the whole package. I, I said it before the fight. He reminds me in the best way of a Buster Douglas, who I have nothing but admiration for. Buster Douglas was always a good heavyweight. Oh, my goodness. He was big. He was strong. He could fight inside. He could fight outside. He could counterpunch. He he had everything. But he didn't always have the mental side, the belief in himself, the resolve. 
And against Tony Tonko, different guy, he would come up short. Not because of talent. And then one night against some guy named um, Mike Tyson. Oh, Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> it all came together. He said, damn it, tonight I am not going to beat myself. Damn it, tonight I'm going to be what everyone thought Buzzer Douglas should be. Damn it, tonight Dubois said, I'm going to be everything that I always was supposed to be. And that people around me always said I should be. And he was. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing but admiration for him and his people around him that they helped get him to that. And that's really what the difference in Dwar is now and in those two losses. That he's the full Pakistan, that he's found himself. That Miller fight was a fight. That, that Miller fight wasn't a fight to get on his record. I know it went on his record. That Miller fight wasn't a fight for a purse. I know he got paid. Nobody's doing it for free. But it wasn't about any of those things. That Miller fight was about himself. It was about finding himself. It was some, called something. It was about something called redemption. That's what, and redemption is one of the most powerful things in this world. And he got redemption. He found himself. And he went and he showed it. Being an iconic trainer yourself, this is a three-fight arc with uh, Don Charles, which is Dubois' trainer. It started with the Usyk fight, and now the last two fights, what you just described so aptly. How much is it uh, a part of the package to find the trainer who can help you find yourself, who can take you in the corner when it's getting hot and heated and make you a fireman? <laughs> you know, it's important. I mean... The fighter has to have the ability, but somebody has to help bring it out. Look, I'll go into a different sport, and without going crazy about it, but, you know, Michael Jordan, to me, the greatest basketball player of all time. Everyone has their favorites. LeBron James is, is the more recent guy, and there's so many great players. But for me, it's Michael Jordan, because, man, he was like a Sugar Ray Leonard, because he, he, he was not only talented, but he was a pit bull dog, and he'd bite your head off, you know, when he had to. Uh, you know, within competition, of course, not outside. He conducted himself right outside uh, at the same time. But as great as he was, until Phil Jackson came along and with that team and put that, they, they didn't get over the hump. They, they needed somebody to help them take that talent and get to where they wanted to go. And coaches are important, you know, and, and I'm... And I'm Saying in a in a controlled way, in almost a meek way, I, because I, I don't want it to look like I'm trying to shine light, because that happens to be what I've done in, in the last you know 50 years of my life, or, or somewhere it's about. But it, it is the most important thing is the fighter, obviously, most important thing. But you know, uh, a coach, a proper trainer who who can bring the best out in you when. It hasn't been brought out yet, you know, that can, your talents with hard work and a good work ethic, and they are what your parents, the genetics were, they, they, that is that that is already preordained. Whatever your genetics were, you were blessed enough, what God blessed you with, those are your talents, and then your work ethic to develop those talents. But then to learn the technique, how to use those talents properly. You know, you can have a Ferrari car, but you got to have a good driver. Otherwise, you're going to crash into walls, you know? Mm -hmm. So so you got to have somebody who shows you how to take that horsepower and drive it the right way. Take those talents to, that you were given and be able to use them in a proper way that will give you the best chance to, to, be, to succeed, to be successful. And then, of course, the final part. You, you need a head doctor. Good, good coaches, and 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 that's part of what Dubois had. He's got good people around him. Good coaches, trainers, a head doctor, psychiatrist, if you will, without the certificate, without the diploma, mm. but they have to know how to get in here because without this, you're done. Seventy-five percent of it's done is this. So without that, uh, it don't matter. You know, you could be Hercules. It ain't gonna matter. You have to be right here. But Don Charles having accomplished exactly what you described, Anthony Joshua, for his sake, seems to have found his man in Ben Davidson. Ben's and, done a great job. And look at the comeback from Joshua, the confidence that's back with Joshua. And these two giant heavyweights, both British, both have something to prove, both kind of in the same cusp, finding their trainer, finding themselves, are on a collision course very, very soon. How do you see that fight unfolding between the two men? 
You have to give the edge right now to um, Joshua. Joshua, I think, has found himself a few fights ago. I think he got to a place where, you know, he's made so much money. He's had so much fame. He's had so much accomplishments with the with the Olympics, with the world title, and being in England where the fans are enormous. The fans are just unbelievable. I always joke. I say, you know, when I come back in another lifetime, if I do, I want to come back as an English promoter. <laughs> because, because I'm going to be very rich because of you because of you because of the fans because you guys are the best you come out for your fighters I'm going to come back as your star uh, fighter I'm going to make it kill and, and, and so so you know it, it's just they Joshua I, I think a few fights ago uh, he he found himself in a way where with everything that he had done where it, it suddenly, it, it wasn't fun for him anymore. It was, I, I, I think he was under certain pressures, personal pressures and, you know, feeling that he had lost to Usyk twice. And just to, and finally, I think it got to where he said, you know what, I'm going to do this for me now. Mm. And not, not for the, you know, for the masses of people that obviously adore him and uh, give him adulation in, in England. And, and, and with that comes pressure and expectation of different things. I think that he really did. He got to a place where he said, the only expectation I'm going to live up to is mine, for me and the people around me. And he became happier. He, he became more content. He, he became better. And, and you saw it. You saw it in his performance. And then Ben Davidson was part of that, too helping him find that, helping him find himself in those kind of ways. And he is, um, he's at a real good place right now. So I would have, you'd have to favor him. You'd have to, at least from my, again, from where I'm coming from, uh, from the lens I look at, you'd have to favor him going into this fight. And there's one thing that Dubai will have to get better at continually, defense. You know, he will, his resolve, his heart, you know, his, his mentality, um, his perseverance, his endurance, his conditioning, all of it got him through those first three, four rounds, you know, uh, with Herkovic. But he got hit a lot of clean right hands. You're not going to want to get hit with those against Joshua. You know, ironically, some five, six years ago, the biggest fight that could be made in boxing was Joshua Wilder. We all were begging for it. We were all expecting it. It's going to happen. And now... It appears that it may never happen, uh, based on the performance we saw from Wilder last night and his statement he may before retire, the fight. Yeah, is it time? Is that performance <laughs> evidence that it, it's over? Listen, that's for him. That's for him and his family to decide, not for me or you. But you know, he has hinted at it before the fight. He was honest. He was upfront about it. That uh, if I don't get through this fight, which he did in the right way, I have to entertain the thought of that it may be time for me to step out of the business. Everyone, you know, I I, I just shake my head sometimes when people say, "Oh, is it gee, oh, is it time, Teddy? Uh, uh, it's it's so sad." Uh, it could. Everyone's time comes in anything you do you know i was telling somebody yesterday that i have a very good friend He's, he was the top hand surgeon in new york he just retired he 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 really he, he loved being a hand surgeon but he's at an age he's at a time in his life where it became time to retire as much as he loved it and there comes a time where the window closes on whatever you do. Maybe even with you someday. Now, you got a long way to go. Long way. You're healthy. I'm going to be stammering no, and no, drooling no, on this no, camera. Yeah, you put but, me in a then box. Somebody might come and say, come <laughs> it's, here, it's come over here. <laughs> Sooner or later, for anything, there comes a time that's part of life. But here's the part that I got into a little, not into a thing, but I said to somebody yesterday, I said, sad? The man has made millions of dollars 
Al Heyman's done a good job with him. He's made money. He, he's been in the Olympics. He won a bronze medal. He's been a champion of the world. He's been all over the world. He was honest about it. He said, boxing's been good to me. It's afforded me so many things. He's got seven children. He, he said that he loved very much. It's given him an opportunity to take care of that family. And, he, and he's earned the right now to go off into the sunset if that's what he wants to do. And, and er, he's earned the right to, to take the things that he's, he's accomplished and use them in the way he wants to for his family and enjoy them. And the thing that I was touching on about saying to the guy yesterday is rather than say it's sad, we should say what would be sad to me is when you've been in this business, a, a hurting business, a, a, a business that, that is a, a it, Every time you get in a ring, a fighter leaves a piece of himself potentially in that ring. That's the truth. It's a hard truth, but it's the truth. This is an unforgiving business. It's a great business, but it's an unforgiving business. So when you get in that chamber of truth and you come out of a little bit less of yourself, you know, you know what? You hope that there's a worth, worth to it for yourself and your family. There's been a worth to it for Deontay Wilder. What would be sad is if he went through all that and he didn't have those things to take care of his family. I've seen fighters that have gone through that. And they don't, at the end of the day, they don't have the things that they work to have. They don't have the things that they took the risk to get to take care of. They don't have that. That's sad. But in this case, I look at it differently. I say it should be celebrated. His career should be celebrated. You should say, if you decide to leave, enjoy it. Enjoy it, you earned it. I mean, Teddy, what you described, that roller coaster, the guys who have, have fought and gotten through all that stuff and then not had it, and then the guys like Wilder who has done well for himself and have it at the end. Uh, we had a conversation just before the fight about Mike Tyson's upcoming Jake Paul fight and whether or not this medical condition that he got pulled off the plane about might have been a reason to not have the fight. And, of course, subsequently the fight has been postponed. Um, you know, we never know if that is actually going to get a new date or what it is. But we do know ulcer was an issue. That's something I've never heard in all the, my years that a fighter having an ulcer is a problem, I think, because really a fighter at this age isn't something I've ever had to cover. So with that said, um, do you ex just what is your reaction to the fight being postponed, if not canceled? He's 58 years old. Um, it's... It's up to him. Only he knows the extent of any serious, you know, problem medically, anything. Only him and his family know. We, we don't know. He has an ulcer. People have, do have ulcers. You know, you, you can have an ulcer for various reasons, you know. And um, you can, you can, the ulcer can heal, can get better, and you can go and do whatever it is that you do. We don't know beyond that what, you know, if there's any extenuating circumstances uh, medically in any way, we have to go by what we're told. He has an ulcer, it's being treated now. And then, you know, you leave it up to the people around him, that, the people that love him, that, that they will do the responsible thing, that, that Tyson himself will understand. He's got family. He will understand what's most important at the end of the day. We can't judge on that. Uh, he is 58 years old. You know, obviously, we knew that going in. Um, there is a risk anytime you get in the ring, uh, no matter who you get in the ring with, there, there's there's a risk. When you're 58, there's more of a risk. I mean, you don't need Teddy Atlas to, to lay that out for you. At the end of the day, people do things for different reasons. And we don't know. I, I think the best assumption we can make for me would be that I would think, I would be glad that He's not doing it for money because it seems that over the last several years he's done very well. And, and that's good. That's good. He's deserved that. He was the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. He was a great heavyweight champion. He's iconic. Uh, he, he should be in a, a good position when it comes to monetary things to be able to take care of his family. So that's off the table. When a guy comes back in a late age because of money, to me that, that, that's troublesome. But he's so you got to say he's coming back. Why is he coming back? Nobody knows 
really, what is, I, I put it this way the other day, what is knocking at somebody's door? You know, nobody knows what, what, what is important to, what is necessary for them to be content, for them to, to be happy, for them to, to, to do something that only they know is important. Someone else looked at it and said, 58 years old, what the frick are you doing getting in the ring? But obviously it speaks to him in some kind of way that, that he, you know, that there's, there's a need for him to do that. And um, we can't judge that. We don't understand that. We're not him. Only his family and him know that. But at the end of the day, the only the way you can look at this is if it's not meant to be, if it shouldn't be, you hope it doesn't happen then. Uh, and again, it's, it's up to people around him and himself to make that decision and to know what that decision should be. Uh, it, it seems like, you know, in some ways they're moving forward, uh, the Paul, Paul brothers, because they already announced they were going to fight each other. I don't know if that's real. <laughs> no, but, I, but, but it is out there, and it got a lot of attention from what I've been told, right. that the two brothers would fight each other, and that that may, at the very least, replace what was going to be him and Tyson, at least for now, right. you know? What does that mean? Tyson fights the winner? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, lastly, Teddy, uh, another fighter who shined last night, expectedly so. Bevo got a fairly early stoppage, and it reminded me that, you know, Canelo, when he stepped up to 175 pounds, another great night for Bevo, who was able to beat Canelo in 12. And now we see Terrence Crawford, who I think is kind of like a, was at where, where Canelo was then, which is like, okay, everyone knows and feels I'm the best. I'm going to accept challenges and dare to be great. Goes up to 100. 75 and it just seemed like too much weight for him now on the horizon we have crawford stepping into 168 pounds potentially to fight well not yet canelo slow down slow down <laughs> this he, he, he's going to 154 first he has to take care of that first, okay, first we yes. can't get too far ahead of ourselves <laughs> i i know that we get excited when we talk about these top fighters and the things they can kind of what it could mean for future fights and all those fights you know, will be embraced by the by the boxing public and by us and the media and everybody. And we get a little excited about it. But first, he's got to get past a good challenge, a real challenge, at 154 pounds for that title. He's got that coming up. That comes first. And he, and he hasn't gotten past that. He hasn't shown yet. I think he will. I think he's very special. But he hasn't shown yet that he can go up, what would this be, a fourth weight class, I guess. Yeah. A fourth weight class, a 154, you know, bring his speed, bring his power, bring his expertise, bring everything that's special uh, against a really solid, strong fighter. Uh, he has to do that first. And, and it should be that way. You know, test the waters. And, and then once we see him and how he performs at that heavier weight class, then we can start to look ahead and say, all right, now I can see a possibility of him going up even further because of what I saw here. It gives us a, a better viewpoint uh, and a more responsible viewpoint of being able to judge it from something tangible. Now, okay, he went up, he fought a good fighter, he won another title at 154. Yeah, or for that, maybe he can go take another step, but one step at a time. Well, while Crawford is busy, Canelo's path is completely free now he is not obligated to fight uh, any particular fighter and Benavidez still waits in the wings it seems Benavidez like has a tough fight coming up you guys are sleeping on he's fighting a guy named Alexander Vosik a former world champion former lightweight light heavyweight champion he's bigger um, than Vosik uh, I know he retired and he was inactive for three, four years, but he came back. He's had two fights, two easy fights to get back. But uh, he's got to get past Vosik first. It's no walk in the park. I'm telling you right now, he could stub his toe there. Hmm. All right. Now, I know I'm looking past. You want me to slow down? And I love Benavides, by the way. I love Benavides. I love, I love the approach he has, him and his father, uh, what he brings in the ring, how he conducts himself. You know, he, he's obviously fun to watch. Uh, he's fan friendly, like I used to always say. So I, I, I love Benavides, but um, he does have to get past a, a real challenge. If you're Canelo, first as a businessman, are you taking the Crawford? Assuming that Crawford and Benavides are successful in their upcoming challenges, are you taking Crawford 
Are you taking Benavides? And then, uh, as a warrior, as a as a fighter who wants to go down history as the best of all time, are you taking Crawford or are you taking Benavides? Well, Benavides, if, uh, I mean, only because that's what, because of the weight. Uh, and and because of the call from the public and you know where it's just uh, what's the word the term they use weight bully I, I see people call people weight bully I don't even I don't know if you get in the ring and you're facing somebody I don't care what weight it is you're not a bully you 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 get in there to fight you you are ahead of most people in society that you can go and face another man in a ring uh, and face everything that comes with that. The, the danger that comes physically with that and the pressure mentally that comes with that uh, to deal with, you know, all of your inhibitions and doubts. Not too many people could do that. So I don't use that term, but I, I think that the public for his legacy, the things you're touching on, the public would feel better about him beating a guy that is more of his weight. You know, uh, Crawford is a generational talent. I use that word. That's a big word. He, he's that special. Uh, but we we don't know yet if he can take it. I mean, he started at lightweight, right? He actually, he started at lightweight, then he went to junior welter, then to welter, then he, we're, we're, we're assuming he'll win at junior middleweight. Then you'd be going another two weight classes. So... People would, at the end of the day, you're talking about history. You know, how does history look at something? History will look at it and say, yeah, he beat a guy that was really great at lightweight, at junior welterweight, at welterweight, at junior middleweight, and then he went a little too far. You know, so I think if you put him in with Benavides, they're going to say, oh, hey, this is what we've been waiting for. And this is... Uh, this is the challenge that really will tell us what we want to know. This is what I always say when I see Teddy Atlas sit down next to me. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the analyst that will tell us what we want to know. And every single time you deliver, I appreciate your intensity and your, your generosity with your time. I know it's been a long week. I'm going to let you get to your family and get on home. Thank you again for an incredible fight week and an incredible career. Radio Raheem with Teddy Atlas.